Chapter 27, Magnetic Fields. Magnetic fields covers magnetic fields, discovery of the electron, the whole effect, circulating charged particle, magnetic force on the current carrying wire, torque on the current loop, the magnetic couple, the magnetic dipole moment. You can find them in a timeline, magnetic field. What produces a magnetic field? There is a magnetic field around a permanent magnet. There is a magnetic field around a conducting current. From where does the magnetic field come? The answer is, it comes from moving charge, current. A charge set up an electric field whether the charge is at rest or in moving. A charge is set up a magnetic field only if it is moving. This lodestone is a rock composed of naturally occurring magnetic ore. When we hold a bar magnet near the lodestone, it reacts just as if it were another bar magnet, showing attraction between unlike poles and repulsion between light poles. These two bar magnets will be used to show magnetic attraction and repulsion. One of the magnets is placed on a bearing stand and the other brought nearby, first with unlike poles together. The magnets are attracted to one another. Now with light poles together. This time the magnets repel one another. The definition of magnetic field B. Similar E equals F E over Q. Moving charges in the magnetic field are exerted by a force. If a magnetic monopole were available, we could define B in a similar way. Because such particles have not been found, we must define B in another way. We fire a test charge Q through the point where B is to be defined using various directions and the speed for the particle, the charge will be exerted a force Fb. Now, look at this one. This is in the Earth's magnetic field, okay? We have a charge, they twist because they will exert a magnetic force. This is a magnetic field, a strong magnetic field. We see when some, something happens, you have a two particle. Uh, one is negative charge, when it's positive charge, it's different. Okay. Let's see the facts. The magnetic field can deflect the test charge sideways, but it cannot change the test charge's kinetic energy, the speed. Second fact is, a magnetic field exerts no force on the charge in one direction, only in one direction. Other direction, it, it does have a force. Three. So, the maximum value of the deflection force is at right angle to this direction, no force direction. Four, the magnitude of the deflection force is directly proportional to Q and to V. Five, the direction of the magnetic deflection force depends on the sign of Q. Positive and negative test charges with equal velocity being deflected in opposite direction. We see these five facts. Do you remember that? Okay. Now, mathematician can help us remember this one. Okay. We can summarize all these results with the following vector equations. Fb equal qv cross v. Fb is the force acting on the charge. 
This is the charge Q. That's the velocity of the particle. This is the magnetic field. Okay. That is, the force of B or the particle is equal to the charge Q times cross product of its velocity and the magnetic field B. The force FB acting on the charged particle moving with velocity V through a magnetic field B is always perpendicular to V at B because this is a cross product. So F is always perpendicular to V and B. Now, let's see how powerful this formula. It can explain our five factor. Factor one, the magnetic field can deflect the test charge sideways, now you have F, sideways, F is always perpendicular to B and B. But it cannot change the test charge's kinetic energy because it's perpendicular, so you never change x ray or dx ray the V. Factor two, a magnetic field exerts no force on the charge in one direction. Now, if V is parallel to B, V cross B equals zero in this direction, in the B direction, so no F, only one direction. The maximum value of the deflection force is at right angle to this one. Now, when it's zero, you get a zero. When it's perpendicular to maximum, because VB equal to VB sine theta. Now, theta is 90 degree perpendicular to this one, F is maximum. Factor 4. The magnitude of the deflecting force, F, is directly proportional to Q and to V. 5. The direction of the magnetic deflecting force depends on the sign of Q. Positive and negative test charges with, with equal velocity being deflected in opposite direction. You see how powerful it is equation you have to remember this one. FB equal Q V cross V. Now, we use the right hand rule. If this is a positive charge, Q is positive. This is the direction of velocity V. This is angle 5 between B and V. So we use the right hand, curl our fingers from V to B. This is a V cross B, F direction. And this is V cross B, if the positive charge, and this is the same direction, okay. If it's negative charge, and this is opposite direction, it's going down, this is FB, okay. Remember, this is FB, this is V cross B. You have it designed by the sign of the charge. We can rewrite this the magnitude, the FB equal to Q, V, B, sine phi. The phi is the angle between the V and B. The metric system unit for B is Tesla. One Tesla is about 10,000 scars. Okay. Now, let me review it. V cross B. First, we use our right hand and extend four fingers along the direction V. Then we rotate from V direction to B. Okay, so this is your thumb, extended thumb is the direction of V cross B. Okay, V cross B. Now, if this is positive charge, so this is V cross B, the FB, the same direction. Uh, if it's a negative charge, so the FB is opposite the V cross B direction. Okay? V cross B is always the same, never changes. Uh, FB designed the sign of the charge Q. Let's see some magnetic field. The smallest one is the, is the this is a very small, 10 to the minus 14 Tesla. And the biggest one at the surface of neutral star is 10 to the h Tesla. And our Earth is about 10 to the minus 4 Tesla, 1 Gauss, 0.5 to 1 Gauss. 
magnetic field line. We can represent magnetic field with magnetic field lines, just as we did for electric fields. Similar rule applies. That is, one, the direction of the tangent to a magnetic field line at any point gives the direction of B at that point. And two, the spacing of the lines represent the magnitude of B. The magnetic field is stronger when the lines are closer. And conversely, Here is a single bar magnet. If we sprinkle iron filings on a glass sheet sitting on top of the magnet, the filings fall into a pattern which shows the shape of the magnetic field. Here are two magnets with like poles facing. Here are two magnets with unlike poles facing. Here are two parallel magnets with like poles facing. Here are two parallel magnets with unlike poles facing. Figure A shows how the magnetic field near a bar magnet, a permanent magnet in the shape of a bar, can be represented by magnetic field lines. The lines all passing through the magnet, and they form closed loops. Even though they are not sure closed in the figure, all lines are closed. Okay. The end of a magnetic from which the field lines emerge is not originated. Emerge is called the north pole of the magnet. The other end, where the field line enter the magnet, is not ending. Okay, is called the south pole. So magnetic field line is different from the electric field line. Uh, object magnetic poles attract each other, and light magnetic field poles repel each other. The external magnetic effects of a bar magnet are stronger near the end. This is stronger. See the line is closer. Okay, is closer. In the northern hemisphere, the magnetic field lines always generally point down into Earth and towards Arctic. And in the southern hemisphere, they generally point up of the Earth and away from Antarctic, that is always from Earth's geometric south pole. So from this one, we know that the magnetic pole and the Geometrical Earth pole is opposite. Okay, in the North Pole of Earth, we have South Pole magnetic, uh, and in the South Pole of Earth, we have North Pole of magnetic. Some pole. A uniform magnetic field B, okay, with magnitude one point two million tests, is direct vertically upwards. Throughout the volume of a laboratory chamber, this is a, we we look from up downstairs. It towards you. It goes up. Okay, a proton with kinetic energy five point three million electron volt entered the chamber, moving horizontally from south to north. Not moving from south to north. This direction V. What magnitude diffraction force acting on the proton as it entered the chamber? I want to find this one. Okay, the proton mass is one point six seven times ten to the minus twenty seven kilogram. Uh, we neglect Earth's magnetic field. A uh, one is only ten to the minus four Tesla. Okay, 
much smaller than this one. Now, let's see. Formula. Okay, you want to find the formula? Okay, F equal to QV cross V. Here we have a Q. Okay, we don't have V, but we have a kinetic energy. And we have B. So it looks like this is a very simple question. Okay, uh, the B, we know that. Uh, kinetic energy, we know that. Okay, the mass, we know that. We want to find a V. Okay, we know K is kinetic energy is half mv squared. Okay, this is mass a proton. So we find a V. Very simple. 2K or M. We get the number. Once we get the V, uh, we can get the F. QVB sine the phi. This phi is 90 degree. Okay. So we have a Q, we have a V, we have a B. Sine phi equal to 1. Uh, that's very simple. Okay. Uh, this is a simple mathematics. We get out some. 6.1 times 10 to the minus 15 Newton. It's very small, very small. Discovery of the electron. Closed field. Let me close field. This is a, you have a magnetic field and electric field. They are perpendicular with each other. Discovery of the electron. Let's see this kind of devices. Okay. Here is a tube to the vacuum pump. That means all these devices is in vacuum environment. Here we have a filament. We used a battery to heat them up. So it have electron eject from the filament. Here we apply voltage, huge voltage. This is a positive, this is a negative. So the electron with negative charge, you attract to this positive. And there is a hole in this plate. So some of the electron when so direct to this point we have a spot of light okay in this area we have a cross field this is two plates positive negative so the e is downward okay we also apply we can apply b which is leaving us perpendicular to e okay now we do the experiment okay we know B is perpendicular to E, they got a crossed field. Okay. And this V direction is perpendicular both B and both E. Okay. Now let's do the experiment. We set E B equal to zero. Nothing. And this one according to Newton's first line, we direct hit this point, uh, the center point. And then we apply E. We know electron with negative charge will be uh, exerted a force by the electric field. E is downward and the force E is upward because electron carries negative charge. So it will deflect to this one. All right, to this one. And we can find the B point. Okay. And maintain E. We apply B and adjust B so that the direction would come back to the original. What this mean? This mean the force acting on this electron by electric field is equal to the force by magnetic field. Okay. After turn on E, we have learned in previous chapter, the electron will vertically move while equal to half a t squared because vertically it does not have initial velocity so y equal to half a t squared a is because electric force so the qe f over m is a caused by electric field t time is it went through distant air with velocity v so this is time air over v t squared Okay. We will see that it, the spot S move up or down. After turn on and adjust B, so we, be, we see there's no deflection Y. It go back to original. What does it mean? That means the force acting by magnetic field is equal to the force by electric field with opposite direction. So that means 
This Fe is QE. Fb equals QEB, and they are equal. That means QE equals QEB. The Q cancel out. E, V, B, they have a relationship. The V is E over B. Now we can measure the E and measure the B, and we know the velocity of the electron. Okay. The cross field allowed us to measure the ratio M over Q of the particle moving through Thomson's apparatus. If you this one, M over Q, this one, M over Q equal to E L square over 2Y and the V square. Okay, and this V equal to E over B. Okay, we put the V equal to E over B inside and we cancel the one B at uh, one E, we got M over Q equal to B square A square 2YE. Now, we measure this Y, we can write this one, okay, M over Q. Okay. Thompson's claim that these particles are found in all matters, all matters. Second, he also claimed that they are lighter than the lightest known atom, hydrogen, by a factor of more than one thousand. The exact ratio proved later to be 1836.15. These two claim his MB measurement coupled with the boldness of these two claims is considered to be the discovery of the electron. Great physicist from UK too. The whole effect. Crossfield, the whole effect. As we just discussed, a beam of electron in a vacuum can be deflected by a magnetic field. Can the drifting conducting electrons in a copper wire also be deflected by a magnetic field? In 1879, Edwin Hall, then a 24 years old graduate student at the Johns Hopkins University, showed that they can. That's from USA, 24 years old graduate student. This Hall effect allowed us, one, to find out whether the charge carriers in the conductor are positively or negatively charged. Two, to measure the number of such carriers per unit volume of the conductor. Three, to measure directly the drift speed V drift of the charge carriers, which you might recall is of order of centimeters per hour, which is slower than a snail. Hall effect. First, we apply both magnetic field B and the current. This is a B into the page. A current from top to bottom. This is a copper wire. Second, we say both positive and negative charges move to one side way. So then we can check whether this is positive or negative. You look at this one. We look at a negative charge. Current is downward. So next charge moves upward. So V, V cross B is, look this one, V cross B is in the direction. And since it's negative charge, so it was exerted force to the right, this is FB. So that means the negative charge was accumulated on the right side, this side. Now, suppose it is positive carrier. Then current is downward, it is downward. So there's V cross B in this direction. And it, it is also the force direction, FB. So the positive charge here will go to this direction. Okay? So that means both positive or negative charge move to the one side way. Then we can judge from this potential difference. Okay? If it's positive carrier, this side is potential is high. If negative charge carrier, at this side potential is low, so we can find it. 
3. Whole potential difference V, this is V equal to EQ, uh, e, I'm sorry, ED, uh, this is this is D, ED, potential difference. Okay. Then from the sign, we can find it's positive or negative. Okay. Now let's look uh, how it affects. First, we know it is negative charge which is carrying the current as electron. Second, it can tell us how many in the unit volume. We look at this. At equilibrium, what do you mean equilibrium? Now, the charge accumulated here, it will establish an extra electric field towards the right. Okay, this is positive to the right. And the electron will be absorbed another electric force. This is E, so the force will go this way. This is Fe, this is Fb. And when the electron accumulates more and more, it is E and bigger and bigger until, until we find these two force equal. That means QE go direction. QB is QV dB go direction. The equal. Then what they happen? It will not drift to any direction. It goes so. Okay, so this is a must be the equilibrium condition. QE equal to QVBT. Or in this case, we got drift velocity VD equal to E over B. What is the E? E is V over D. There's a potential difference divided by the distance D. Okay, and from peer, previous calculation, we know that the drift speed is equal to the current density of N E. N is the carrier density per unit volume. E is the charge of the electron. Okay. And this current density equal to total current divided by area. What is area? Now, this is a D. If the thickness is T, so this is a DT is the area, cross section area. Okay. And we know that VD, the drift speed, we calculate from different point of view. They must be the same, okay? So we get this one is V over BD equal to VD equal to I over N DT. So from this one, we can find N. Thanks God, you see? We know B, we know I, we know V, we know E, we know T. We can get this one. This is wonderful, this is wonderful, okay? Finally, we can find the drift of speed. We mentioned it, the drift is very slow, okay? Yeah, very slow. And we also explain uh, why uh, before, right? It is also possible to use the whole effect to measure directly the drift speed VD of the charge carrier, which you might recall is of the order of centimeters per hour. We do that when switch on the electricity, the bulb, the bright, instantly okay it looks like the current goes very fast but actually the drift speed of electro is very very slow uh, we have explained why right now we we'll look at this one when the electro move this direction current downward it upward okay and we know it was exerted force by the magnetic field okay. now what do we do we try to move this current, the couple current, opposite direction with velocity u, velocity go. And then we can check the electric potential, okay? In this clever experiment, the mantle trips is moved mechanically through the magnetic field in the direction opposite that of the drift velocity. In this case, go up, this go down, okay? So, if we did not find the potential difference between them, that means no drift force. Okay, the speed of the moving strip it then adjusts until the whole potential difference vanishes. At this condition, with no whole effect, that means the velocity of the charge carrier 
with respect to the magnetic field must be zero. And we know, so the velocity of the strip must equal in magnitude, but opposite in the direction to the velocity of the negative charge carriers. This Hall effect probe will be used to demonstrate the deflection of electrons inside a conductor in the presence of a magnetic field. This is a word. The probe yeah. consists of a small rectangular metal strip with two leads feeding current in along its long dimension. Another pair of leads along the sides reads the voltage developed sideways across the conductor in a magnetic field. The voltage output is zero in the absence of a magnetic field. When we bring the probe near a magnet, an output voltage appears. Reversing the probe in the field reverses the polarity of the output. This animation shows how the electrons flowing through the metal strip are deflected by the magnetic field. The electrons are pushed toward the bottom of the strip resulting in an accumulation of electrons near the bottom and a voltage between the top and bottom of the strip. Sample. Fig shows a solid matter Q of H length D, or D, 1.5 centimeter, moving in positive Y direction at a constant velocity V of magnitude 4.0 meter per second. The cube moves through a uniform magnetic field B of magnitude 0.05 OT directed towards positive Z. Question A. Which tube phase, we have six phase, is at lower electric potential and which is at higher electric potential because of the motion through the field? Now we assume positive charge inside, not negative, because we get the same answer. Positive is easier to handle. If positive move together with this Q, go up, and you have a B, we know, okay, Q, Q, V cross B, V cross B is this direction along positive extrusion. If the charge, okay, is the positive, then the positive charge will go this direction, will accumulate this one. So this face on the right has a high potential, and the face on the left with a lower potential. The left face is at the lower potential, and the right at higher. Question B. What is the potential difference between the faces of the higher and the lower electrical potential? We use the same thing. In this case, we balance the magnetic field force, the equal to electric field force on the carrier. So this is the electric field force, this is the magnetic field force, they must be equal. Okay? So yeah. then we can find the potential. The E equal to V over D. Okay. So we put one, we got V. Uh, very simple. 3.0 millivolt. Circulating charged particle. A beam of electron is projected into a chamber, this is from here, by an electron gun G. And we have made that V uniform towards U, this point towards U, perpendicular to the, at the page. The electron follows a circular path in the perpendicular magnetic field. Okay. Then we see the electron will be exerted a magnetic field force F equal to QV cross B. Okay. And what is important is what the purpose of this force? This force actually is the centripetal force of this circling. Okay. With, because in doing circling motion, a centripetal force is offered by the magnetic field. That's the point. So, what the centripetal force? 
mv square over r. What does magnetic field apply? Uh, can give you qvb. So this is the key equation. Okay, this is a, the magnetic force used as a centripetal force. Now from this equation, we see that the, the r is proportional to v. Okay. Big V, big R. Okay. And then we see the omega. Omega equal to V over R. So from here, V over R, we get omega is QV of M. And we see the period. Because omega T equal to 2 pi. So period equal to 2 pi of omega. This. And once you have a period, we need a frequency. A frequency is the reverse of the omega uh, period. Okay. Uh, now, these three are connected with each other. You know one, you you know the other two. And we see nothing to do with velocity v. Big v, small v, the uh, the period, the frequency, the angular frequency are all the same. Okay. All particles with the same value of the ratio Q of M, take the same time period to complete one round trip. Fast particles move in large circles and slow ones in small circles. So they will have the same period, same frequency, same angular frequency. We'll use this electron beam tube to demonstrate the deflection of electrons in a magnetic field. An electron beam running between these two terminals glances along a phosphor screen, which shows the path of the electrons by the green glow where the electrons strike. If we place a horseshoe magnet over the tube with the north pole closest to the camera, the beam is deflected downward. If we reverse the magnet, the beam is deflected upward. This glass tube contains just a trace of helium gas. We'll fire an electron beam out of this beam gun, which will appear as a faint blue line due to collisions with the helium atoms. A pair of coils surrounding the tube allows us to put a uniform magnetic field through the tube. Here is the beam with no magnetic field. Now we'll send a current through the field coils, creating a magnetic field at right angles to the beam. The beam is deflected sideways. If we increase the magnetic field, the beam curves around to form a circle. This animation shows the magnetic force on the electrons that produce the circular path. When the accelerating voltage decreases, the circle shrinks as the electrons are deflected more sharply. When we tip the tube inside the magnetic field, the path of the beam becomes a helix. Helical paths. If the velocity of a charged particle has a component parallel to the uniform magnetic field, the particle will move in a helical path about the direction of the field vector. Now, we just mentioned the V is perpendicular to B, so it will be the, the circular motion. Now V is this direction. So we can count this V is composed of two. One is V perpendicular, V parallel. Okay. V perpendicular makes the particle will be exert a force. Okay. And V parallel cross V is zero. So no magnetic force because of this part. So what it did, according to Newton's first law, the particle will move in this direction, along V direction, uniformly. Right? Yeah. 
So what happened? What happened? This is the perpendicular make it surrounding. It's okay, a circular motion. At the same time, it moved forward along B. So finally, okay, uh, finally, this is uh, called helical pass. Okay, and we know that from previous calculation, omega equal to V perpendicular over R equal to QBM. Okay, and this pitch, the distance between the two, uh, helical pass, is equal to velocity V parallel multiply the time. The time is a period, one round of the period. So this is one. Uh, we know V parallel equal to V cosine phi. And T period we have calculated equal to 2 pi of omega. Omega equal to QBM. So this is the pitch. Uh, and the, the electron, the negative charge move as a helical pass. Figure shows a charged particle spiraling in a non-uniform magnetic field. This is non-uniform. This is a tight, large B. This is a loose, uh, less B. Okay. The more closely spaced field line at the left end and the right end indicate that the magnetic field is stronger there. And you see, if the F has component along this direction. This F has a component along this direction. So from Newton's second law, it has, when you reach this one, you have acceleration go direction. That means you come back. And this direction, you have acceleration in this direction, come back. Okay, yeah. When the field at end is strong enough, okay, the particle reflects from that end. Okay. If the particle reflects from both ends, you never get out of it. So it is say to be trapped in a magnetic bottle. Electron and the protons are trapped in this way by the terrestrial magnetic field of Earth, forming the Van Allen radiation belts. Okay, and we can see uh, the polar light okay, yeah. auroras uh, at, near the pole. This is a Van Allen radiation bears which loops well above Earth's atmosphere between Earth's north and the south geomagnetic poles. The trapped particles bounce back and forth from end to end of the magnetic bottle within a few seconds. Very fast, okay? From north to south, only very bounce about a few seconds. Simple. This fix shows the essentials of a mass spectrometer, which can be used to measure the mass of an ion. An ion of mass M, okay, and charge Q is produced in source S. The initially stationary ion, it accelerates by this electrophile due to a potential difference V. This is negative, this is positive. So this is a positive ion. Go attracted by the negative uh, term. Speed up and they go through this hole, get into the uniform magnetic field. The ion leaves S and enters a separator chamber in which a uniform magnetic field B is perpendicular to the pass of the ion. This is pass, this is perpendicular. The magnetic field causes the ion to move in a semicircle, okay, striking and thus altering a photographic plate distance Rx from the entropy speed. We can check this point, okay? okay. We know this is x. Suppose that in a certain trial, B equals 80.000 or millitesla, okay, B, and V equals 1000.0 volt. This is the V. An I of charge Q is positive 1.6022 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb. A structure plane here at x 1.6254 meter. 
What is the mass m of the individual ions in unified atomic mass unit? Is atomic mass equal to 1.605 times 10 to the minus 7 kilogram? Now, from previous calculation, it's an easy question. Okay? We want to find the velocity first. And we see at this point, it was accelerated by this voltage. So the voltage, the battery supplied the energy is QV. And this energy transfer to its kinetic energy, half mv squared. So we know the v squared. Okay, v equal to square root 2 QV over m. Once you know the V, we know it's turned around, okay, we can know, calculate the radius equal to MV QV, and X equal to 2 R. You put this uh, V inside, okay, V inside, and we get R equal to 2 X. Uh, from this one, uh, from this one, the 2 R put it inside. We know this, we know this. We know this, we know this, we can find M. Uh, in our case, we find M. This M is 3.363 3 times 10 to the minus 5 kilogram. In terms of unified atomic mass unit, it's equal to 2.3.93. That is 204 units. And we know what measurement it is. Sample. An electron with a kinetic energy of 22.5 electron volt moves in a region of uniform magnetic field B. This is a uniform magnetic field of magnitude 4.55 times 10 to the minus 4 Tesla, about 4.44 Gauss. The angle between the direction B and electron's velocity V phi is 65.5. What is the pitch? This is one, okay, of the helical path taken by the electron. Uh, this is a very simple question, very straightforward. Okay, pitch equal to v parallel time period. V parallel equal to v cosine phi. And the period we have calculated is two pi m over q v. Okay, and then we have everything here. Okay. What is V? Now we have energy. V equal to half mv squared equal to 24.5 electron volt. We have to transform into a jaw and do it. Okay? Uh, we find a V. Okay. We put the V, B, Q, and we got a picture. That's straightforward. Okay? Cyclotron and the synchrotrons. What is the structure of a matter on the smallest scale? This question has always intrigued physicists. One way of getting at an answer is to allow an energetic charged particle, a proton, for example, to slam into a solid target. Better yet, allow two such energetic protons to collide head on. Then analyze the de Bruyne's from many such collisions to learn the nature of the subatomic particles of matter. How can we give a proton enough kinetic energy for such an experiment? A better way is to arrange for the proton to circulate in the magnetic field and to give it a modest electrical tick once per revolution. For example, if a proton circulates 100 times in a magnetic field and receives an energy boost of 100 kilo electron volt every time it completes an orbit, it will end up with a kinetic energy 100 times 100 kilo electron volt or 10 mega electron volt. Two very useful devices, synchrotron and cyclotron, are based on this principle. Uh, this is a synchrotron or cyclotron. Uh, we have two D, they are separate. Okay. 
okay? And this is source, uh, we eject a proton uh, with a speed, and you have a uniform magnetic field of this dot towards you, okay? So the proton will turn around, turn around. And when they, from this D to this D, uh, we have oscillator. When, at this moment, this is a positive voltage, this negative voltage, so it will be accelerated. So we give it a tick, electric tick, energy increase. And then we move to this one, this alternating, it changes the polarity, this positive, this negative, so the electron will accelerate on this section. So on each turn, it has two change to accelerate the both energy until it gets very fused and it just as a B. Okay. Sample. Suppose a cyclotron is operated at an oscillator frequency of 12 megahertz and has a D radius R 53 centimeter. Question A. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field needed for deutrons to be accelerated in a synchrotron? A deutron is a nucleus of deutron, an isotope of hydrogen. It consists of a proton and a neutron, and thus has the same charge as the proton. Now, mass double charge the same as hydrogen. B. We know equal to two pi m f over q. Now, this f is the frequency. This one. Okay. So magnetic field B we need is. 2 pi, the mass, okay, the frequency of a Q. Ah, then we get the B, okay. It's about 1.6 tesla, pretty high, okay. Question B. What is the resulting kinetic energy, K, of the deutrons? The resulting kinetic energy equal to half at V squared. So we first have to find the V. By calculation, we know V equal to R Q B O M. Okay, we put everything in. It's available. Okay, R is point five square meter, not centimeter, meter. Uh, this is a coulomb. Okay, this is a tesla, and this is a meter. So we get V. Okay, and we get V. Uh, v equal to three point nine nine times ten to the seven meter per second. And we know V, and we know the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy you could have at V squared. Okay. We put the number inside, we we'll get an answer. Pretty big, 64 to 6 mega electron volt of 17 uh, mega electron volt. Magnetic force on the current carrying wire. Let's look at. Current carrying wire okay, is in the middle of a magnetic field. In our case, the magnetic field is towards you, perpendicular to the page. A magnetic field exerts a sideways force on moving electrons in the wire. This force must be transmitted to the wire itself because the conduction electrons cannot escape sideways out of the wire. For example, if the currents go this way, you have the I cross B is 12. If it, it change the direction of the current, the force will be different. Now, let's calculate how much force acting on this wire, okay? We'll use a large horseshoe magnet and a current carrying wire to show the force a magnetic field exerts on a current. The wire is placed between the arms of the horseshoe magnet. Then 20 amps is run through the wire in the direction shown by the arrow. The wire jumps out of the magnet. This diagram shows the directions of the current, the magnetic field, and the force on the wire as predicted by the right-hand rule. 
If we reverse the magnet and run the same current through the wire, what will the wire do? This time, the wire doesn't leap out. The magnetic force on the current now pushes the wire down. Now, let's calculate. How many force acting on the wire which carrying I? Suppose this is a section of air. Now, we see the force acting on this section is actually is the force acting on all the conducting uh, carriers in this section. Now let's try calculate the force, magnetic force, acting on the section air of this current carrying wire. Of course, this is the sum of the forces acting on the charge carrier in this section. Then we count how many charge carrier in this section. Now, this is the Currents going up. That means the electron moved up. And we started from here. Okay, how much time it need to cover air? That is, okay. This is each force on each carry electron. Okay, and then it, it takes time t. The t is air over BBC. This time it's from here to here, and all these carrier is in this air. How many? Before we calculate, we turn the T. The T is air over V piece. And, and the Q, what means this Q? Q is the IT. This is the current intensity times the period. And the period is this one. So in time T, you have all these Q flow into this section. And the force, the total force acting on this carrier is the force acting on this section of air that's correct okay so the fb for each one is qb qvb this is a sinusity in our case there's the v is the direction the v is perpendicular to the to the page towards you so fb equal to q q is iv over air times v b and v cancel out equal to I L V. This equation gives the force that acts on the segment of a straight wire of length L, carrying a current I, and immersed in a magnetic field B that is perpendicular to the wire. And we can write in general. We can write this. We can write D F B equal I L cross B. Uh, you, that includes the direction. Okay, you compare this one. This is on a charge Q. This is on the current I air. FB equal to I air cross B. This is I air. Okay. okay, this is B. The angle is phi. So this is, we use right hand rule. I air cross B. You get this direction perpendicular to B, perpendicular to I. Okay. Uh, and we compare with the charge. And it's similar, very similar. This is a charge velocity. This is a current length. Rewrite it, okay. Uh, the phi B is the angle between them. Okay. If a wire is not straight, we can imagine it broken up into a small straight segment and apply for each uh, straight segment IDB equals ID across B to each segment. The force on the Y as a whole is then the vector sum of all the forces on the segment that makes it up. So you do the integration, you get FB equal to integration DFB equal to integration IR plus B. Don't think that's simple. It looks simple, but when you do it, it's not simple. This is a vector you have to dissolve into x, y, z direction. You find fb x, fb y, fb z, uh, respectively. And then you combine these three components, fb equal to fb x i, 
plus FPYJ plus FPZK. This light bulb is attached to a two-way switch so that it can be powered either by direct current or alternating current. When we bring a large magnet up to the light bulb when it is operating on direct current, the filament bends to one side because of the magnetic force on the electrons flowing through the filament. If we run the bulb on alternating current instead, the filament sways back and forth 60 times per second as the current reverses direction. We'll use this aluminum disc which spins freely between the poles of a horseshoe magnet to demonstrate the force that acts on a current flowing in a magnetic field. Two pools of mercury electrically contact the center and the bottom edge of the disc. When a large current flows between the center and the bottom of the disc, a magnetic force on the current pushes the wheel to one side and starts it spinning. Reversing the direction of the current reverses the direction of spin. This glass dish contains a solution of copper sulfate between two copper rings. A magnet in the center ring provides a magnetic field which is pointing vertically upward. When a current is run between the copper rings, magnetic forces on the moving ions produce a sideways force that spins the copper sulfate solution, as shown by small pieces of cork floating on top. Reversing the direction of the current reverses the motion of the solution. Reversing the magnet reverses the spin. If we remove the magnet from the center of the dish, the spinning soon stops. Example, a straight horizontal length of the copper wire has a current I, 28 ampere, is towards you, little I. What are the magnitude and the direction of the minimum magnetic field B needed to suspend the wire, that is, to balance the gravitational force on it? The linear density mass per unit length of the Y is 46.6 gram per meter. Now, the key point is what to balance it. So the FB must be upward, balance this one. So the magnitude, is, is, it must be equal to mg. In other words, mg equal to IRB sine phi. Phi is the angle between B and the current. We don't know. And in order to find the minimum B, we must have the maximum sine phi. In that case, phi is equal to 90 degree. Okay, so B can be minimal. And this is a one. In other words, the angle between B and A is 90 degree. So in, is the direction. Perpendicular A, perpendicular one, okay? And perpendicular to I. Then, very simple, B equal to mg over I air, and air over, let me see, yeah. let me see, yeah, this is ml, ml is 46.6, .6. remember, we have to use unit kilogram, 
So we multiply 10 to the minus 3. Okay, and we get answer. Torque on a current loop. Now we have a current loop in a magnetic field. Uh, this loop we have, this is uh, counterclockwise current. Okay, and this loop we will find out. Okay, it will be you have a current, you will find it has a torque on this loop. First, <clears throat> we define the torque acting on the current loops. We define the direction of the current loops. And remember, they call the current direction of the current loop by right hand rule. We use a normal vector n that is perpendicular to the plane, okay, a plane of the loop. So, the first step, we point or curl our fingers your right hand in the direction of the current at any point on the loop. This one. Use your right hand. Curl your finger, four fingers. And your extended thumb then points in the direction of the normal vector n. We define it. In this case, you use your right hand, you get n is up. This n we call the direction of the loop. Okay. Unit. In our case. Now let's analyze it. Now, this is loop. This is a, a magnetic field to this direction. Uh, let's analyze how, many, how much the loop. We have a current in this loop. It's clockwise. Okay. Now we analyze uh, side two and side four. This is one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, side two, four. Now we look at this curve. We look at from this side. So this page, this this line is this line. Okay, we take a picture is this line. We use a right hand loop. Okay, it's a, this current loop. So this is a direction of the loop n. Okay, this is the same thing. This is the n. This is the direction. Okay, now let's analyze it. First, we look at these f two and four. Okay. We know FB equal to I L cross B. This is the length of L. F2 and F4, they are the same. What is is I current. Length, this is called a B. Okay? And uh, the angle, because this angle, this is angle, uh, this angle with the current, this angle. This angle is 90 degree minus theta. Okay? And F4, you have the same similar situation, uh, a different direction, okay? They are equal and they are in the same line, same line, so they cancel out as a total. No net force acting on this loop by F2 and F4, okay? And then if we F1 and F3, F1 and F3, they are perpendicular to the curve, right? Look at this one. Uh, look at this one. They're perpendicular to to n uh, uh, to b. Okay, to b, to b. So this the magnitude is i. The length is a. The b. The angle is ninety degree sine one. They are equal and and opposite. But wait, you see this one. This is F1, this is F3. They don't acting on the same line. So let's see what happening. Okay. Even though they have the same magnitude, but they didn't in general on the same line. So let's see the torque around this point, axis, rotation axis. We know this F1 torque is R cross B. Uh, this R is this one okay? The F is this one okay? So we should talk around this one. F1 is F times this one. What is this one? This one is half of this. This is B, half B, and this angle is equal to this angle theta. So this lens is half B sine theta. 
So this talk equal to two part. One part from F1 is F1 is I A B. Multiply by this half B sine theta. The same thing for F3 is I B T plus half sine theta. So this pair you have a torque acting on this loop. Put together, we get it. I A B sine theta. This AB is the area of this loop, so we call this A. Okay, so the torque can be right in general is I A cross B. Uh, B theta is the, this angle because we know that this is M, uh, the direction of A. Uh, the A has the magnitude AB, the area, and direction perpendicular to this one, the N. So torque, torque on this current loop is I A cross B. As A defined as area and normal direction. If you have N term, then the torque is multiplied by, by N, N A cross B. This square aluminum frame rotates on a pivot bearing. At the bottom of the frame, contacts dip down into two separate pools of mercury, which allow us to run current through the frame, yet leave it free to rotate. We'll run a current in this direction through the frame, then bring a bar magnet up to the frame, north pole first. The frame rotates to the right. If we repeat with the south side of the magnet, the frame rotates to the left. This is a large open model of an ammeter movement. The large permanent magnets on either side provide the magnetic field. Current applied to the meter flows through this central coil, which rotates by an amount that is proportional to the current. When we reverse the direction of the current, the deflection reverses. This is a large working model of a DC motor. Permanent magnets on the side provide an external magnetic field. Current to the central coil flows in through this commutator, which reverses the direction of the current through the coil twice per rotation. When current is fed into the motor, it begins to spin. This animation shows the current that runs through the coil as it turns and the magnetic forces that act on the current. The magnetic dipole moment. In physics, we like to identify the main features of a problem, ignoring details that do not matter. In this period, we describe the current carrying loop by a single vector mu, its magnetic dipole moment. We take the direction of the mu to be that of the normal vector n to the plane of the coil. We define the magnetic of mu as mu equal to n i a. n is the turn number. i is the current in one term. So n i, we put it together, is total i. I A. 
is magnitude, and direction is the direction of A. So we write this mu, uh, the magnetic dipole moon of the carrying current is I A N, I A. Okay. And the torque, as we learned in previous section, equal to I A cross B. Uh, the magnetic field acting on the current carrying loop. This A is the area times N. So this we call it mu. So the torque becomes mu cross B. Uh, it's very easy to remember. Okay, they call it magnetic dipole for a current carrying loop. This is very similar to the torque equal to P cross E. Remember, the electric dipole. In the electric E, it will be exerted a torque. Why an external magnetic field is exerting a torque on a magnetic dipole, such as current cane coil? Work must be done to change the orientation of the dipole. The magnetic dipole must then have a magnetic potential energy. That depends on the dipole's orientation in the field. For electric dipole, we have shown that you think of the electric dipole in the electric field is minus p dot e. In a strict analog, we can write for the magnetic case that magnetic potential energy equal to minus mu dot b. When this mu is parallel to the B, this dot maximum you have minus, is the lowest energy. The, from energy conservation point of view, it's more stable, okay, more stable, okay. Yeah, yeah. And in this case, uh, the potential energy of the magnetic dipole is the lowest. This is minus, this is biggest, okay. Yeah. And when theta is 90 degree, this is mu, this is B, Okay, okay, we put the N is parallel to B but opposite direction. And we put this potential is minus mu B cosine 180. Cosine 180 is minus 1. Minus 1 minus 1 is positive. It's the largest, the lowest. Okay. A magnetic dipole has the lowest energy when its dipole moment mu is lined up with the magnetic field, like this case, okay. And it has its highest energy when mu points in the direction opposite to the right. The difference in energy between these two orientations is the potential difference, okay. From 0 to 180, we put this together, we get a 2 mu b. This much work must be done by an external agent, uh, something other than the magnetic field, like the heat excitation, to turn the magnetic dipole so 180 degree, starting when the dipole is light up with the magnetic field. Our Earth a proton, an electron, and the simple bar magnet are also magnetic dipoles. We're looking at some uh, magnetic dipoles. Okay, see the Earth, very huge, uh, and a small bar magnet phi. Okay, an electron have electron dipole nine plus three times ten to the minus four, and a proton one point four ten to the minus twenty six. Sample. Figure shows a circular coil with 250 turns and an area A of 2.52 times 10 to the minus 4 square meter and the current 100 milliampere. The coil is at rest in a uniform magnetic field of magnet B equals 0.85 Tesla. With its magnetic dipole moment mu initially aligned with B. Question A. 
and figure what is the direction of the current in the coil. Now, because mu is here, so the current direction must be this one by right hand row, right? Question B. How much work would the torque applied by an external agent have to do on the coil to rotate its 90 degree from its initial orientation so that mu is perpendicular to B and the coil is again addressed? That's because no kinetic energy because again the rest. So we, we have a fine, okay, mu theta is minus B dot B and the work applied should be 90 degree minus zero degree. Remember in this case, no kinetic energy, uh, no kinetic energy. Okay. So we put this number inside, we get it mu B. Uh, now we put a number inside, mu equal to I and A B. Uh, number, okay, I. Is, the given is 100 micro ampere. We should use the ampere as a unit, okay? In the area is square meter, and the B is Tesla. Yeah, we get this one. Next chapter. Chapter 28, magnetic field due to current. Why can you make a comment and give suggestions so that this program can be more helpful? Acknowledgement. This video clip is a part of my lectures on college physics during 1990 to 2021, based on the adapted textbook, Principles of Physics by Holiday, Resnick and Walker, published by Willie. The demo videos were bought from a company in USA by my university for teaching. They have a lot. I'm sorry for not remembering its name to show my appreciation. It seems that they came from the University of California, Santa Barbara, where I got my PhD in physics. Thanks, God. 